Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. This time we are going to be talking about WCW Wrestling on the NES. The version that we're going to be looking at today was released in 1990. It is a reskin of a Japanese game called Superstar Pro Wrestling. That game's roster was cobbled together from wrestlers from All Japan Pro Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. The North American version, those wrestlers are from WCW and I believe also NWA wrestlers since World Championship Wrestling was part of the NWA at the time. NWA stands for the National Wrestling Alliance. It was basically the governing body for professional wrestling before, it, before all the territories got bought up. And that's a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to get into here. What all this means is that the WCW wrestlers are actually based on the All Japan Pro Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, wrestlers. Here's a breakdown of who everything is based on. In the North, I'll start with the North American version wrestlers and then just tell you who they translate to in the Japanese game. Lex Luger is based on Antonio Onaki. Ric Flair is based on Giant Baba. Mike Rotunda was based on Jumbo Serata. Uh, Kevin Sullivan is based on, oh geez, uh, Genichiro uh, Tenryu. I am so sorry to anyone out there who actually knows these characters' names, so please feel free to lambast me in the comments below. Sting is based on Riki Chosu. Rick Steiner is based on Akira Madea. Uh, Ricky Steamboat is based on Bruiser Brody. Oh, thank God I have a I have an American wrestler in here. Road Warrior Hawk is based on Stan Hansen, even though both games have Road Warrior Hawk in them. This means Michael P.S. Hayes is based on Road Warrior Hawk from the Japanese game. Steve Williams is based on Big Van Vader. Eddie Gilbert is based on Abdullah the Butcher. Road Warrior Animal was the only one that was unchanged between the two versions. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the gameplay of WCW Wrestling. Like other wrestling games at the time, there's no story mode to this, so we can jump right into the gameplay. The gameplay, in my opinion, is extremely cheap. The computer can just lock you in place and beat you down really fast. And yeah, it, it was really goddamn annoying. That's the only bad thing that I have to say about this, is it's very cheap when you're going up against the computer. As you play it, it probably gets much easier. But when I first sat down to go through this and didn't really know what I was doing... Yeah, it was incredibly cheap, and I got frustrated really fast. However, the moves are all pretty easy to perform. Once you beat your opponent down, they kind of go into a rest hold, or a rest state or kind of an exhausted state, and you can grapple with them and then perform one of your moves. Those moves are tied to the directional pad and either the A and B button, and they're all pretty easy to do. When we look over the manual, you can see the different game modes that, that are available. There are really only four modes. You have two two-player modes, two single-player modes. Both of them are one-on-one -on -one matches and tag team matches. In the one-player mode or single-player mode, you have just a single match with a five-minute time limit and one fall. Tag matches are ten-minute time limits and one fall. When you play for, with uh, two players, it's 15 minutes with a best of three falls for the one-on-one -on -one matches, and tag matches have a 30-minute time limit with a best of three falls. What it doesn't tell you when you just start the game up without looking at the manual is that the tag matches are a round-robin tournament, which is pretty awesome because I didn't know that at the time, but it allows you to just pick a tag team and start going. Each wrestler has their own set of moves that you can choose from, 
which is pretty awesome because it lets you kind of customize the moves that you're going to be doing in the match. They have the same basic moves for every wrestler, so once you get into the grapple position, pressing any of the directional pads in B will perform the same move. However, when you want to do the special moves, or yeah, I believe they're the feature moves or special moves, then you have to pick those from a list that is presented to you when you start the game. It's pretty awesome. Those are all done with either directional pad and the A button. So up and A does a certain move, down and B or down and A does a certain move. And those are all selected by the player before you start. It's kind of great because you get to just program how you want to play even though it is limited at this point. In the single player mode when you're doing one-on-one -on -one matches, you just have to beat everybody. And once you do that, you then get to the big boss, which is the WCW Master, who I'm just going to go ahead and assume is somehow related to the Dungeon of Doom Master, and Kevin Sullivan hasn't joined his side yet, so yeah. I forgot to mention that the WCW Master is based off of Andre the Giant, he is a masked wrestler, and that ties into Superstar Pro Wrestling again, where Andre the Giant was under his persona as Giant Machine, which was from this whole machine stable. And yeah, I'd, it's another thing that I probably don't want to get into here. You just need to know that WCW Master is based on Andre the Giant, who was based on who was the uh, person under the mask for Giant Machine in the Famicom version. I know I threw a whole bunch of stuff at you, and there's a lot of pro wrestling lore that goes into this that I am just not as up to date with as I probably could be for going over this game. So I'm going to tell you what I know and just kind of leave it there. There are also finishing moves in the game which are a little difficult to pull off because you need to get your opponent in the center of the ring and then you grapple with them and press both A and B at the same time. The screen will flash to say that they're doing a finisher and your wrestler will perform his, well, his finishing move. It's great that these are in here and that you can't just do them whenever you want. You have to have your opponent at a certain health level which I never really saw a health gauge here, so I wasn't totally sure on that. And I also only saw like a finishing move being pulled off once or twice, and it was always by the computer beating the crap out of me. I am really terrible at this game, by the way. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, move into the graphics. Well, I really like the graphics in this game, and I think it's probably the best looking pro wrestling game on the NES, there are some issues with it. And those tie back to just the reskinning of these characters. The only thing that was really changed were the faces. And yeah, it it creates some some problems. Like I don't ever remember Ric Flair wearing tights. I don't remember Lex Luger ever wearing tights, and a few other characters, I don't know too much about them from the 80s, but many of them, I don't ever remember seeing them in tights. The Road Warriors are fine for what they're doing, but yeah, you'll notice that everyone's body kind of looks the exact same, but the color of their tights will change. Some of them try to blend in with the person's skin color, but it doesn't look that great. And yeah, it's that's really the only knock that I have against it, is just the look of the characters. Which probably can't be altered too much because of the way the game was done. Aside from that, the game looks great. I think the graphics are really good. The characters' animations are great. You can always tell what's happening. Uh, the hitboxes are a little awkward. This kind of ties into the gameplay, but every once in a while it looked like I was hitting my opponent when my arm or my foot were just kind of passing through them. 
So that was a little off, but it was never too bad. Things do look rather cartoonish, but it's fine for the video game that it is. I'm not exactly looking for photorealism here when I'm talking about an NES game. The game does have a lot of issues with stuttering. It was really distracting when I started playing it, but eventually I did get used to it. I think that's probably how animated the crowd is. That might have something to do with it, just because there's so much happening whenever the crowd's in view, and it might be affecting just the overall gameplay of it. It's great that you see the crowd reacting to what's going on and just really losing their minds and cheering this match that's happening. But, yeah, if it came at the price of uh, just what was happening and what was going on in the ring, I'd, I would rather have smoother animations and everything like that than having the crowd going crazy. It is really cool that you can toss, your play, toss uh, wrestlers out of the ring and I don't mind the fact that the camera shifts the way it does, just because it gives you a better perspective of what's happening. It does the same thing when you go to the top rope, like the camera wants to focus in on what the wrestler is doing, which is pretty cool, and it goes into the whole like cinematic or television performance that's happening here. I really like the way the game looks overall, but yeah, the, the stuttering is kind of an issue with this game. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the roster here. I think WCW Wrestling has a pretty good roster, but there are some weird things that go on when you get into tag team matches. My knowledge of WCW isn't all that deep, but when I was looking at just the game's base roster of 12 wrestlers, I could only really spot two tag teams that I knew about, and I don't think Sting and Luger were tagging at the time, or were in a tag team at the time. The Road Warriors were, and Rick Steiner was in a tag team, but I don't think it was with Mike Rotunda or Kevin Sullivan. I know at one point they were kind of a group called the Varsity Squad, but I don't think they were actually tag teaming together in 1989. So I looked through the WCW roster from that from the era that this game would have been programmed, and yeah, I, th I think they made some weird decisions, like leaving Scott Steiner out and some other people, but I think that had to do with them just not being big stars at the time. Right now, I would say this is probably the second best wrestling game that I've played on the NES. Granted, for this channel, I've only gone over three of them so far, but I think this is going to be the second best, just because it feels so much better than what WWF WrestleMania was, but it's not as much fun as uh, pro wrestling was. Even though this one does offer a little bit more than pro wrestling, I feel like this one just isn't as much fun to play as that game is. This did uh, give me the idea to go and look at some of the Famicom wrestling games and also the many wrestling games that were on the Super Famicom that we just never got here in the U.S. So there's that. A lot of good came out of playing this one and also digging into its history. So yeah, that ought to be fun to do later on at some point. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below and if you played this game when you were growing up, I would love to hear stories about it if you remember it all at all. So I will talk to you all later. Bye.